A strange weekend for Youngstown police. A jump in calls for raccoons acting strange, but we're told it's not because they have rabies. Tonight, First News reporter Molly Reed shares a firsthand account from a man who saw one of the raccoons and took pictures of it. Plus, we're hearing from ODNR about why the animals are acting this way. Molly has more details tonight at 11. In the past couple of weeks, Youngstown police have been called to over a dozen of these raccoon calls. And all of them have the same report of what they are calling strange zombie-like behavior. And all of them are happening in the middle of the day. Looked over there and he got distracted and he saw a, a raccoon coming our way. Robert Cogasol's playtime with his dogs was interrupted by a feisty and sick raccoon last week. I got the dogs back in the house. The raccoon falls right to the front door. Once inside, Robert, a wildlife photographer, grabbed his camera to document what he called extremely strange behavior. He would stand up on his hind legs, and, which I'd never seen a raccoon do before, and he would uh, show his teeth, and then he would fall over backwards and go into almost like a comatose uh, c condition. Robert attempted to scare the raccoon away, only to find the animal was not interested in leaving. He'd come out of it, walk around, and then he'd do the same thing again. Youngstown police were called to 14 similar situations in the past three weeks. Reports detailing particular behavior and large noises or motions not scaring the animals away. The majority of the calls happened in the daytime, too, and raccoons are nocturnal. Those animals, including the one in Robert's yard, were ultimately euthanized. The Ohio Department of Natural Resources tells me it doesn't sound like rabies, but rather a disease called distemper. Raccoons are really uh, prone to getting several different diseases uh, that, uh, even amongst themselves, can be devastating uh, to the population. Jeff says diseases like this stay local and eventually die off. When you end up with a, just a couple individuals left uh, that aren't as susceptible to it, then uh, the disease kind of dies out for a while until you know the populations grow again. And Jeff says trapping is the way to keep the sick population down. He says once you do trap them, though, do not relocate them. These ones, unfortunately, have to be euthanized. In the newsroom, Molly Reed, WKBN 27 First News at 11.